Hey, got ourselves a absolute value limit problem. So the way to start this off is by breaking it up into the limit from the right and also the limit from the left. And we're gonna check to see if these are equal. If they are, then it will be equal to the original limit. If they're not equal, all bets are off. That means that the original limit does not exist. All right, so let's see what happens. The first thing to notice is that we've got the absolute value of x minus one. We wanna replace that with x minus one in the first limit, the one where we're coming from the right. The reason why I wanna do that is because if we were approaching one from the right, then we'd be dealing with numbers that are greater than one. So if x is approaching from the right, you'd be dealing with x values that are greater than one. And in that case, you would end up with a positive on the inside. So you can just drop the absolute value bars. You don't need it. So I'm gonna take this bottom here. I'm gonna replace it with x minus one. And on the top, it's got x squared minus one. And we still have to talk about the limit as x approaches one from the right. Okay, now before we finish off with that, let's talk about what's happening when we're approaching one from the left. Well, if you're approaching one from the left, your x values are gonna be less than one. Okay, so this is the tricky part. Now when we're dealing with that situation, the absolute value of x minus one, it's not gonna be equal to x minus one anymore. If I just write this, that's wrong. It's only true if the thing inside is equal to a positive. If the thing inside is equal to a negative, then turns out you need to put a negative times the inside because if the inside is negative, then the negative of a negative will make it positive. So it's a little tricky, but on the bottom, we're gonna replace the absolute value of x minus one with the negative of x minus one. Now on the top, it's x squared minus one, and we still have the limit as x approaches one from the left. Okay. Now let's head back to the other guy. And in the other guy, we can factor. So instead of x squared minus one, I could have wrote the top as x plus one times x minus one on the bottom, x minus one. The factoring party has turned into a canceling party. And now we still have the limit as x approaches one from the right of that. Now we can plug in the one. If I would have tried plugging in the one from the beginning, one minus one would have been zero, not good. But plugging in the one now gets me one plus one, that gets me two. Okay, so that's the limit from the right. Now let's take a look at the limit from the left. In this one, almost the same story. On the top, you factor x plus one, x minus one. But on the bottom, when we cancel, we still have a negative floating around. So it can't just leave it like that, I have to put negative one, or I can put the negative out front and say it's negative x plus one, but it's still the limit as x approaches one from the left of that. Now I can plug in the one here, but in this case, it's one plus one with a negative out front. So that will get me two with a negative out front, in other words, negative two. Okay, so is the limit from the left equal to the limit from the right? Well, two damn sure ain't equal to negative two, so that means the answer is no, they are not equal, which means that the original limit does not exist. End of the story. All right, there you go.